Hey, it's Karina Reichman, and you are listening to Comes a Time with O'Teal Burbridge and Mike Fenoya. If you're digging the podcast, do these guys a favor and review and subscribe. It means a lot. Be sure to follow the pod on social media, YouTube, and if you're joining for bonus episodes and exclusive content, go to patreon.com forward slash comes a time pod and get on the bus. And now, here's Mike and O'Teal. We are back in the home studio. No more Vegas, no more Sirius XM, beautiful studio. We are back at home. Comes a time. That's O'Teal. That's Mike. Hi, buddy. Beck. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm tired. These kids are wearing me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, though. Is it weird that I want to live in the sphere? <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> that place, I, I thought it was going to ruin concerts. It ruined life. <laughs> you know, the funny part is, uh, uh, very much of this year, I do live in the sphere. <laughs> <laughs> you really do. I really do. It's crazy. I do. And I, I thought about it the other day. I was like, this is bananas. Because I had, you know, the Beacon Theater was the other defining residency of my life. Yeah. And uh, and now all of a sudden, you think these things will never come back. You know, that your best days are behind you. Will I ever get another gig, you know, after the Allman Brothers ended? Yep. And it's like, yeah, you will. And uh, one day you're going to have another residency called The Sphere, which if I even explain it to you, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. Future you shows up in yeah. like, and goes, hey, imagine a snow globe in Vegas that you're going to be playing at for 30 days and you'd be like what the hell no or if someone if i came back from the future and go you know the holodeck on star trek that you love so much you think, <laughs> man that's going to be so cool when that happens the holodeck remember that yeah, yeah remember how those star trek communicators came true yeah and the phasers <laughs> did too and warp drive and all that guess what there's this thing called the sphere <laughs> you're literally going to be 300 feet tall on the screen like, you're going to be 300 oh. feet tall okay my my uh <laughs> i got a call yesterday from uh the pain management folks that gave me the epidural in my back mm. and they were like we're just checking in to see how your back's feeling and i'm like i don't know if the epidural helped but mickey hart <laughs> uh <laughs> sent haptics through my seat at the sphere and i think he put that herniated disc back in place dude <laughs> i got up literally from saturday's drums and was like oh shit the chiropractor that's his new name for me is the chiropractor, <laughs> the chiropractor. Dude. <laughs> mickey's the chiropractor clip this eric and let's put that out there mickey add to your resume director of transportation world music uh coordinator chiropractor we all have better backs because of the sphere man i want to sit out there it's so bad although i don't think there is any place that escapes the haptics when mickey does that because i'm on the laying on the floor by the stage looking up yeah while he's doing the beam and yeah it feels to me like every single thing in that entire block is oh. getting its back fixed <laughs> Including O'Teal, the buildings. <laughs> I can attest to that because I was coming in during drums. That's when I <laughs> entered the show because I had my shows at the cellar and I'd come in at after my second set. So I had an Uber ordered at the Rio waiting for me. I'd go I'd go on stage. Thank you. Good night. Race to the Uber. Get to the sphere <laughs> while I'm handing my ticket. You hear and like literally like the outside of the place and, and and like a couple of like lot hanger ons are outside still with their finger in the air at like set two mid set two and you could hear you like like literally just drones of sound coming out into the streets of vegas which has to be very uh confusing for you know there's an underground dwelling community in vegas did you know about this 
Wow. I shouldn't be surprised. So it's like escape from New York, basically. There are people who live yeah. underneath the streets of Vegas. You, you got to look it up. Actually, it's... it makes a lot of sense considering how hot it is topside that there would be a whole subterranean side. They're living in the drainage, in the rain ditch. So like if it ever wow. gets like a deluge there where it just rains, for like it'll wash out like thousands of people, people who are, are living under. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. But. I'm thinking wow. how crazy for them to be like <laughs> and then Mickey Hart comes to town. <laughs> Ew. They're like, wait a minute. Oh, dude. Good thing we're underground, dude. It's all happening. <laughs> yeah, it's the this is the big one, Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth, I'm coming. Top sides going down. Uh, yeah, so, underside. Tell me, you know. As Yorma mm -hmm. said, life is all in the tangents. <laughs> we'll come back to the sphere and Mickey. <laughs> unpack for me more this underground subterranean, yeah. subterranean uh, community. So you know how there's the folks that live in like the unused subway stations of Manhattan where you can like walk in through the Bronx, basically like where Metro North comes into Grand Central, there's a tunnel. Yeah. And you could enter through there and there is a whole black mirror kind of under verse of uh, dwellings, wow. unused subway stations that people use as homes. And they they kind of surface <laughs> during the day and they get their food and they get their water and they do whatever they have to do. Drugs, alcohol. Then they go back under and live down there. And... There is an exact Whoa. same. Yeah, there's a. Oh, it's. But See, it's, I didn't know about that in New York. I'm oh not my god! Totally really? surprised. I'm not surprised, but no, I didn't know the detail. I mean, I figured, yeah, there's probably people living down there, but I didn't know like if you go use subway stations. I thought all the subway stations were used. Okay, well, welcome <clears throat> to your next YouTube wormhole because oh boy, it goes deep, Oteil. And oh, there's geez. like where where like say you're at like a stop on the train that that's used if where the wall meets the you know the end of the sidewalk meets the wall people jump down and run down into the tunnel to get to their yeah. unused there's a lot more subway stops than are used a lot so more subway stops than i i did not know and you know nature abhors a vacuum yes that's <laughs> right and you know it's actually kind of a a, a testament wow. to these folks how they take they take a, a a real shit situation and turn it into a dwelling yeah i mean they're they like kinda, i got a roof over my head and, we'll and they start go there and it's so it's not funny but it's 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 microcosmic of our yeah. on ground level where this is the fence. This is my yard. Stay the hell off my yeah. yard. People have like these cardboard boxes are my walls. This is my house. This yeah. is my couch that I drag down here. This is my, you know, clothesline. It's pretty intense, dude. So wow. in Vegas, so it's in like Vegas, like shakedown, basically. It, pretty much, they live on <laughs> it, underground shakedown. Underground yeah. <laughs> wow. So in uh in uh. Which the thing that freaks me out about the whole thing is just the size of the rats that must be dude. dwelling down there. I mean, that's Man. underground Manhattan rats. Yeah, but dude, then those again, are puppies, dude. if there's people down there, there's pets. So there's probably pet rats, the mean ass cats and dogs that will protect right. you from said rats. I hope so. I, or know? or rats are a it's hunter gatherer down there where rats are like a delicacy. Maybe and you they're got, getting barbecued. Yeah, rat burgers with cheese. Um, so wow. in Vegas, underneath the strip, there is this massive drainage ditch thing, and yeah. folks are living under there. And they, wow. I, I, the, the, I think it's almost a little bit more accessible to the outside world than yeah. the subway grid thing. And also because Vegas is way more open than Manhattan. Yeah. And you could kind of exit through drainage ditches and sewer things and whatever to like, I believe that in some places there were even like generators 
that like brought power down. Like people had like lamps and like, it's almost like dormitory style where it's like what your wow. area is tarped off and you've got like crates that have like a lamp. And a lot of people are down there for religious reasons. A lot of people think that Jesus wants them down there end because of the world's shit, end of life. the world shit is. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, especially imagine with that. And it's also a good in, deal shadier. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ima- yeah. You're in Vegas and you're like, <laughs> imagine having desert. that. Yeah. That frame of reference of like, you know, the world's turning to shit and you're in Vegas where the world, <laughs> the world is kind turned. of turning to shit. <laughs> the people pay to turn the world more into shit. But anyway. Yeah, there's a whole <sighs> underground dwelling going on. So Mickey Hart is sitting right on top of someone's <laughs> studio apartment, g- just droning and, them. And again, on th- this week on Who Needs Acid? Yes, yes. Mickey Hart just moved into the sphere. Yeah. His They're going, tires. turn it down. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> in the ceiling. Can you, yeah. And especially if you're expecting the end of the world. And that's <laughs> happening. Yeah. <laughs> Like, he's here like alien. he's here yep they're like pack up our rides here it's the community collect the collective community all right all right <laughs> they're like our our celestial uber is finally it's here Let's show time that's it pack up only bring what you need and, and then hey, we're leaving everything or yeah. are we taking everything i'm not sure how it works it's so interesting <laughs> that like isn't it funny that humans adapt to when it when we need to be uh survival creatures and not like you know up on the surface I mean geez it was 110 almost all week last week like it was vicious right and you we run from air conditioning to air conditioning to air conditioning if you live underground yeah. in Las Vegas you kind of have to just survive yeah, I mean, at least you're not bacon, but it is. They even have it in uh, California where I saw a newspaper article that people were furnishing caves. Like there's couches and holes. Yeah. They're just, they just, uh, and when I looked into it a little further, it wasn't naturally occurring caves. It was caves that they dug out, which is kind of dangerous. Sure. Um, for that is dangerous. Stuff. But, you know, like you say, people will just adapt and survive. And if all of a sudden you're homeless and there's no infrastructure to help you with that, then you dig yourself out a cave. I you go friend, underground. Yeah. He lived, he dug himself an igloo in Portland, Maine in the, through the winter. Really? And he was homeless and lived in, you can actually become very warm in igloos. But you, know, you don't think you're actually going to do it unless a pro made one in Alaska and you're doing it like a tourist, you know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> but wow. yeah, he did it. He did it. Did you ever have a situation where you were like, uh, well, can I have to live in my car? Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. when you were, you kind of got to a point where you're like, I don't know if I can hack it or afford yes. it. Yeah, absolutely. Atlanta, little five points. <laughs> Bruce has told me, <laughs> what was the name of that car? Oh my God, was it called? I can't even re- remember the name of it. Um, it was a beater. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but it got me around town sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I remember at the point that I was gonna be living in it, and I was like. Well, this is the bottom, <laughs> you know, this is, yeah, when you're homeless. So, and count and change for, fortunately, the mellow mushroom there in Five Points and another one on Ponce had huge slices of pizza. So one slice was really like three slices of pizza. You could yeah. literally live off it. And I literally lived off it, you know, if I had <laughs> enough change. To get one of those slices, you know? Yeah. And this other spot, Deacon Burton's, where <laughs> it was funny because he's this old black church dude, you know? And 
I would get the exact same thing every day and he would charge me a little bit different every day. It'd be like 429. Okay. I get the exact same thing. He'd be like 456. I was like, all right. It just kept changing. You know? <laughs> it was, I was the exact same every day and the price just kept, it was like a movie. Wow. You know? oh, that's crazy. Yeah. But I, one day I came in there with just change and I said, cause he moved the, price every day i said how much can i get for this <laughs> and he just uh he took the change he didn't count it or anything and he just make gave a lady back there one of the church ladies a signal and she just loaded up gave me way more than i normally got oh uh, wow you know? yeah because they knew i was they were like yeah he's at the bottom <laughs> They gave you the how much for this special. <laughs> <laughs> and it, but you know, honestly, man, I got to say, like, looking back on it now, being at that point, because that was my lowest point. So I was still eating. I still mm. had a car. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I didn't have a place to live. I didn't have a steady job. But I was only playing bass for a living. And I was like, this is, I should have taught more. I should have done more other things besides just being a player, you know. Mm -hmm. But that was kind of my dogma. And that was the price I paid for it. And that's what I've learned now, looking back on it. Like, hey, I could have made it easier on myself this way, that way, and that way. But right. I hit bottom. It, I could only go up from there. It didn't kill me. That was my bottom because my bottom didn't involve a heroin overdose. You know what I mean? A really bad cocaine addiction, like some heavy, heavy drug. Well, yeah, yeah. Bottom. It, it and, wasn't that. Yeah. And you could have been like horribly injured or. Yes. Health, right. You know, just yeah, yeah. living in your car is not safe. You know, uh, somebody yeah. could have wanted that car, you know. Well, it was safer back then. Um you know, the middle class hadn't been completely eliminated then. <laughs> you know, this is the yeah. late 80s. Yeah. That was yet to come. But so it was actually safer then. Uh, that's all That's all relative. You yeah. Know. Yeah. We're doing now for all the tea in China. And, uh, and friends helped. Friends saved me from that. I slept on couches and then. I got my own place and it just, it was, a, it was baby steps, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, it did teach me. It was good for me because it just, reality is what it is. <laughs> and it's always a great teacher. <laughs> sure is. And so, you know, it's not like anybody chooses the lesson, you know what I mean? It's like, Oh, I guess I'm in a lesson now, you know, like, I guess we do choose it. I mean, like th there's a thing where you living in your car and I had moments during stand up in the beginning where like I was just started dating Lisa and I'm like, why don't we break up so I don't ruin your life? <laughs> because you have your shit together and I'm a, a complete I'm on like phase one of like a 20 phase like shit storm here. So. I don't want to bring you beginning. down, you know? Yeah. And she's like, no, 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 it's cool. But uh, yeah, I remember being like, it, it, I could go get another job. Of course we could go, you yeah. know, but we're basing jokes. So it's like, yeah, I don't have a choice. That's it goes yeah. back to soul. Remember the guy flipping the sign in soul? Yeah. You know, like yeah. that's we're, we weren't the we weren't normal people. What was his title? Something Mystics. The oh, oh yeah, God, he had the greatest. So Mystics title. without borders. Mystics without borders. Woo! Woo -hoo! <laughs> that was I gotta my go back talk. and watch that again. Oh, and he was the hippie, mm. twirling the sign. Yep. Like, why are you so happy? You have the worst job ever. He's like, oh no, you have no idea what I'm doing, dude. Yeah, on the other side, he's I'm traveling captain in the ship, dude. Dimensions, yeah, yeah. <laughs> both at the same time. <laughs> I think people are starting to realize that more and more. I've been seeing a lot of people going like, "Wait a minute, mushrooms for what? <laughs> to quit drinking? 
ketamine to quit cigarettes? Like, oh, this to quit that? And it's like, yeah, yeah, it's not a drug. It's a door. You can use it for all kinds of things. You can also use it's a it's a mind changer. So you can also use it to like reprogram or dump some stuff out of your hard drive, like alcoholism or yeah, whatever it is that's hanging you up. Do you know? And it's yeah. just one way. There's lots of ways to do it. I say do them all. Do meditation. Do therapy. Do some uh, walking through some. Uh, open some doors and walk through them. <laughs> you know. You have to be a you psychonaut a little bit. It's always it helped me way back in the day. Just as far as knowing, oh, there's many, many more things than I considered. Many, yep. and then. Honestly, I wouldn't have been prepared for Colonel Bruce if that hadn't happened because he was the other way that that happened to me. You know, initially it was hallucinogens. Yeah. And then, you know, that's at like 17, 18, 19. Then I meet Colonel Bruce like in my mid 20s. And now he's the same thing. Oh, there's many more things than I considered yeah. inside my own head. Yeah. Definitely inside his head yeah <laughs> and then <laughs> now it's like we have the whole world is kind of ready to consider that or consider all of this yep and again because we used to do just fine with it right i'm very happy that uh i found it again at 40s yeah responsibly you know like yes. i loved it as a kid as a wow snow is cool or like you know wow like this concert's loud or you know like my hand is you know i could see through it and all that stuff right but as a like this i believe that it's like a, a an antidote for the midlife crisis a little bit yes for sure i think it's a thing where you go like all right maybe the first half you didn't really have a choice with certain things like you're given the first uh leg of your path and then to be able to go like let me work on you know assessing the wreckage and kind of you know choosing the path for the next round yeah what do i want to do yeah exactly Not so having a hand unless you're just completely rebellious like imagine being a young salvador dolly or <laughs> colonel bruce or sun ra yeah they were just like at nine they were like yeah, whatever. About yeah, that. well, that's when. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. that's when it's like I'm on the wrong. I'm on the wrong rock here, dude. <laughs> I got to. They I got totally off at Yeah, the wrong, they yeah. realized their extraterrestrial nature. Mm. Their inner hybrid was like, "Yeah, dude, no way is this it. <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't fooling me." <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> So how's that nice how's that nice humidity feeling? Are you getting oh rewatered? Oh it hit me hard when I got back to the East Coast. I was like, oh shit, dude. And I'm just been there a week. You've been there six weeks. Oh, I shed a tear when we pulled into the neighborhood, you know. Right when you pull in, it's facing the lake. And there's so much greenery. Yeah. It was so green and it was like afternoon, so it's sweet light time the mm. late night uh, i mean the um early afternoon uh, late afternoon time and so it was just so green and the so much water in the air and oh my skin i said i feel like a, a shedded snake skin mm, i bet but i it bet. Just, uh, i had a flood of oxytocin just wash through me you know yeah, so it's great being back. Great having the kids crawling all over me and the madness. I love the madness, <laughs> although I'm just tired from <laughs> said madness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny. I was having a conversation with another comic about how, like, I got home. You know, Monday was a. Anytime you travel west to east, you lose a day. You know, so it's like you yeah. get on the plane at seven a.m., but really it's ten a.m. Yeah. And then you land at 6 p.m., whatever the hell. And then you're in rush hour traffic. It's a whole weight loss of a day. 
So it takes a good 24 to 48 hours to kind of like re East coast yourself or whatever. Right. But I kind of had this thing of like, it was almost like a taste of, this is so hard to explain to anyone who doesn't get it and you'll get it when you've been on the road and you come home, you're happy to be home for like a, a smidge, but there's this thing that's like, ah, comfort, comfort is uncomfortable. I got to mm. get back out. And it's <laughs> this thing of like, but now due to like we were talking earlier and laying assist and all this stuff that, you know, the work you do, I've kind of realized like, oh, I'm getting that weird, like Jones to get back out on the road. Like that to me is a warning to like, pay attention to like where I'm at now and enjoy it because yeah. I'm going to be out on the road sooner than later. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, I want to go home. So it's just yeah. this thing of kind of like you're home and that's weird. It's quiet. You're on like civilian hours. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then when you get it back there, you're like, oh man, I just want to cuddle with my dog and my wife and, <laughs> sleep in my bed, you know, go but, to bed at 8 PM. <laughs> yeah. But there's something about that circus life that we live. That's like calls you back, even if it's not drugs. And even if it's not, yeah, it's just that opposite that we live. Like it we is. are, we live the other, we live on the other side of straight life. Yes. That's why I have this kinship and I'm seeing how it expands. It's not just like other musicians. It's, anybody who travels like i feel it with people like in the ice capades sure you know we're all carnies we're all we are. gypsies we're like and that goes back so far yeah the culture yeah. of like just the the wanderer that's what my name is oteal the wanderer you know yeah we're just like gypsies man well mike must mean breakfast by yourself <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> Mike in Italian is table for one. <laughs> you actually have God in your name just like I do. Yeah, Michael. Yeah. Because yeah. the E L and it's I L in ancient Egyptian. Oh, is that what it is? The suffix, right? Like yeah. to the Lord, I think was my uh I had that on my wall. The, which was a lot Lord of pressure. Part. A lot of pressure. <laughs> I know mine's just wander. <laughs> mine's like we're watching. Um but yeah, it it's a thing you get used to. It was groundhog day for me for like, you know, 8 days, 7 days, you know whatever. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, I wake up and I'm kind of like, where am I again? I don't even try like, to keep track now. Yep, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. You have so that's what's interesting. It's like we have that adaptive thing where it's like you're like i don't even care what day i don't even care what well i have to like that's it's going to slam me into place so like the kids get off at three it doesn't matter what my body feels like i could be like oh i feel great right now or i could be like i need to go to sleep right now either way the kids are coming <laughs> you know you got to pick up the kids. You sometimes can't i'm sitting there literally asleep at the uh i'm in the carpool line and someone beeps the horn at your sleep and yeah because we sit there for a really long time you know yeah and yeah. then the, it moves and i have no idea because i'm like <clears throat> and then i look and there's like 300 car lengths in between me and the car sorry that was in front of me yeah i'm just like hey and sometimes I'm fine. So yeah. I just like roll with it. I have to just deal with it. With it. And then when I go back, it's going to be the same. Because <laughs> now right. I will have semi adjusted to here. Yes. Yes. And then I go, I go back to Las Vegas and do the, you know, but you're doing the same thing. Like when you, uh, yeah. are you traveling West again soon? Uh, this weekend I'm driving to Long Island. So that's not I bad. Mean, but then anytime, I need time like in yes. the next yeah. few oh, yeah, months. Yeah. Yeah. Cleveland, Chicago, back to Vegas in September, yes. uh, California oh. a couple times. So yeah, it's yeah. the same. And you know what, man? And in talking about this, it's, it's, I'm like having, I love to, I love that we get to do this because this is therapy. I'm thinking about like, you know, our families, our people, our, our civilian world is going on normal while we're not here. And then we, 
hopscotch into that, right? Yeah. And the ropes get all tangled up, and then we get pissed. And, like, you know, it's just funny that it's, like, I got to realize, like, things are moving normal here. And then I <laughs> drop my baggage into it, and I'm, like, grr, 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 like, grumpy. <laughs> and it's, like, yo, yo, everything's Old freaking Old Sergeant dirty. Grumpy Pants oh. is home. <laughs> Old wet firework just walked in the door and oh man but it's that thing of like yeah dude her life is no her life's great and then you come back and you're like there's no there's always, almond milk it's, it's always something like i'm realizing so you did not want the straight life oteal you didn't want to go to this to the cubicle yes and be in traffic on the same highways every day yeah year after year until you want to blow your brains out yeah you don't even like what you're doing in the cubicle so you're like hey i want to do the opposite of that okay well welcome to the opposite of that welcome to the opposite <laughs> how do you like that it's like well it's great <laughs> at least i sorted that i'm doing what i want part yes yeah oh um, yeah me too me too it just so happened that all the students like Having a life being like a recording studio musician, that kind of went away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I would like to try that. Just go, honey, I'm going to work. And go to the recording studio and cut records all day. And then, honey, I'm home. You know? Yeah. Want me to pick up dinner on the way home? Yeah. I mean, that used to be a thing for a lot of people. A thing that I didn't want to do, actually. I was yep. like, no, I want to be out on the road and find my own voice. You know, <laughs> I'm an artist, you know, whatever. <laughs> you just don't understand me. I don't, I can't, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a studio musician. I'm not a, you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, man. Yeah, it's a, you're not a person that likes to eat fine food either. Are you? No, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're but... a person that doesn't mind used sheets. Oh, the but, shit we put up with, dude. But you know, it was like, I there was a time you could do that, and uh, yeah, that yeah. would probably be about this time in my life when you're getting older. And it's like, yeah, all that traveling's man. It's so it's a blessing to not to do a residency, man. Like, hey, man. Well, you said on, it. You said it. I mean, come we on. talked about it. You're like, I'm looking for another residency, and there it came. So. And you know, manifested that one. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Manifest four more of those, one on the East Coast. I, I'm working on some other shit, believe me. Please. <laughs> it's not I'm even in. On, the, on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> it involves getting the hell out of here all okay. together. <laughs> I'm in. All right. Hey, for long... at least just for some visits, you know? Yeah, just for sure. some visits. Comes a time from Mars. Fuck it. We'll just I'm in. show we see that see there's a, there's other ways to do this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's so funny too, is like the uh <laughs> you're such babies where it's like I am, not we. I wouldn't put this on. Maybe you grew out of it. But there's a thing where it's like time zone, like, you know, my wife's going to work at four in the morning, five in the morning, you know, uh, East Coast time which I'm going to bed essentially when she's waking up to go to work. But I'm saying goodnight to her before I have even eaten dinner sometimes, you know? And then I go to bed and I'm like, oh, I want to talk to her, you know? And I'm like, do I call and wake her up? And then it's like, no, I don't want to do that. And yeah. it's, it's just boohoo shit that like, it's like, yep, yeah, she's got her. You got to think about that side too, where it's like, she had to talk to you. That's also that's real stuff too. Yeah, the boohoo stuff is real. It's yeah. real and okay. It's okay that that's the, this whole uh, stiff upper lip shit that we got from Great Britain. I think we need to rebel against. Yes. I really do. I think well, it's we why to... we have talk midnight chats sometimes. Like you yeah. talk me off the yeah, because I'm like Anything dude. I gotta with ooh on the end. I think we should embrace again. Woo woo, boohoo, voodoo. Like and anything with ooh, it seems ooh is getting such a bad rap or has had such a bad rap since yeah. the Enlightenment. And it's like, wow, it doesn't feel like there's so much light in all this enlightenment anymore. Mm. You know? Maybe we need to go back to our ooze. Ooze. Let it ooze. Let it ooze. Let it you ooze. Know? 
<laughs> let it ooze out. We need someone to ooze to, though, bro. And that's what's important. Is like someone to ooze to. Yeah. So if we thought, you know, I've been, I'd, I'd text you like, I'm, I'm awake if you want to bullshit, and then I get that call, and I'm like, all right, sweet. And it's almost this thing of like shooting like the signal up, going like, any other weirdos open to talk right now while I'm Bad driving back? Signals. Yeah, that's what we need. I think we need. Uh, yeah, that's a great way to look at it. If we all, if we could get uh, like a collective bat signal. Yeah, know? yeah. It's just For a microphone. All situations, just like a brother needs help right now. Yeah. <laughs> a distress signal for creative other you know opposites like welcome to the opposite we need like a just talk, just talk to me for a half hour you know it's so funny because you hear yourself then saying talking and you go i'm fine it's okay you know what i mean like you just sometimes got to get it out and yeah, it's when amazing you talk to somebody else and hear what they're going through it kind of takes your mind off your own stuff Right. Or it gives you half half of it, like as you're helping them with theirs, as they're helping you with yours. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's so true. And that's where the friendships that, you know, comics have said for years, like, you'll never be friends with the people that don't do comedy once you start doing comedy because they don't understand the struggle. Now, for a while, that may have been true. But then the good thing about COVID was it brought me back to my civilian brothers and sisters yeah. you know and they're tight they're closer i'm closer than i've ever been with them yeah but at 1 a.m i'm calling you dude like i'm calling it's, jay that's what I was, i'm calling a yeah. tell you know it's so it's, it's the other carnies yes <laughs> you're the only ones who are up you know what i mean like seriously yes. i know like i could call a wrestlers there's a couple of wrestlers i could call and i, I could call musicians i could call comics musicians, yep. comics like you know i feel like i could text big steve at 3 30 in the morning yes. and be like yo can you talk to me now i got some cats from cirque du soleil i'm telling you seriously i'm gonna have some ice capades people i feel it coming maybe we should start like a midnight <laughs> a midnight uh <laughs> Yeah. midnight meetup or something for the uh, you know the opposites for the carnies yeah I the ooze it. we'll call it the ooze the, the ooze, the ooze cruise. Ooze. <laughs> the ooze cruise. oh dude the ooze cruise and it'll just be like all right if you're lonely out there here's the distress signal come find us and we just talk and i guarantee if there were 30 people on the call then there'd be 29 28 27 you know what i mean and people going i'm okay Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for this. That be, that's so cool. That's so Colonel Bruce to lose is to gain. The more people you lose, the better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they feel yes. better. I'm better <laughs> now. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Yep. That is one good thing about Vegas. Boy, if you're feeling fucking terrible about yourself, <laughs> take the elevator down to the casino and do a laugh. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. I'm to like, me, yo, I, I should run for office at this hotel. I'm the best. I'm in better shape than most. It's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a, like a grocery uh, bag full of quarters <laughs> next to a machine. Lighting one cigarette off the other. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness, man. I have I totally embrace just the absolute weirdness. Oh, yeah. The absolute bottom of the barrel because it's it's humanity. It's the it's epitome. It's the epitome of one side of humanity. Yeah, yeah. It's complete Absolutely. and utter naked vulnerability. You know, <laughs> I mean, you can't. I see some people getting in this elevator, and I'm like, good <laughs> lord, helpless, helpless, dude, <laughs> completely helpless, barefooted at a casino. <laughs> like, god damn it. You what lost, is going you lost your shoes <laughs> <laughs> show me the slot machine that you takes flip-flops <laughs> <Every day. laughs> this, see this is good you know this would be one of those things that i would file under i'm glad i live long enough to learn this yeah i'm glad i live long enough to learn that you can still <laughs> lose, lose your actual shoes and make 
Wow. You could lose your shoes. Yep. You could totally lose your shoes, dude. Uh, Someone will take those from you. Someone Someone will take your shoes. Oh, Jesus. That is hilarious. Uh, Oh, I needed this. I I, I swear. uh, I was thinking about like. Right before uh, I go back. (laughs) I know, right? Tie those fuckers tight, dude. Ugh. Yeah, well, you're per- <laughs> you're purposely losing your shoes, which is good. You're taking them off. You're not having them taken off. Uh, My God, yeah. I feel better. Me too. Thanks. I needed thanks this. For the, thanks for the ooze. <laughs> we uh, oozed it out, dude. Get Welcome it to the out, opposite. man. Yeah, totally. It needed will it. ooze out of you. That's the thing. It will. You know, I love. That's what I love about words. Like the word osmosis. It has it in there. Oh yeah, osmosis O-Z. is actually the ooze where it, yeah. it, it oozes both ways. Yeah, it's like That's the osmosis. the wizard of ooze. Wizard, right? That's Colonel. Br- we we take turns being the wizard of ooze because it's like if you let the other person just, it's like conf- it's like like carny confessionals, you know, yeah. just come come let it all out and realize, yeah, you chose you chose this life because you can't do yeah. the other. Can I tell yeah. you? When I got a gig, when I was in the writer's room with Impractical Jokers, my first season, it's a very weird time because I just got passed at the Comedy Cellar. I just started working the road and I got my first writing job where I had to be at the office every day in the financial district in Manhattan. Wow. And I was maybe four years married. So, yeah. A lot at once and (laughs) kind of all these things where it's like you're scared to say no to anything because you know there's a line of mile. Someone wants that writing seat. Someone wants that spot at the cellar. Someone's going to open up for a tell or Big J or Ari. And, you know, like someone's going to want my wife. (laughs) There's a million. (laughs) Everybody wants what I have. Right. And I have this imposter thing. So when I would sit in the office, when I would sit in the writer's room, I felt like Shrek. I felt big and ugly and loud and gross. And everybody else was like tempered and calm and shy and, you know, but I was like, yes, but I was this like, oh, like, like, let's just get it done. So I could go do the five other 10 to the five other irons in the fire, you know? And it's just this thing of like, I look back on that guy I wouldn't want to be in a writer's room with that guy. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't want to be friends with that guy. Like I had, I I gobbled everything up and, but it was, I was also, and I say Shrek because Shrek's aware of his, uh, ogre, ogre. Otherness. Yeah. Where I wasn't at the time, you know, but I felt weird and I felt bad, but it's so funny to think back on like how uncomfortable I felt. Yeah. Walking into a building and sitting in a chair for 10 hours a day for five days a week. And I couldn't wait to get out of there, you know, but (laughs) you know what I mean? So it's this thing of kind of like, you got to pay attention to those. If you feel like Shrek. Yeah. Maybe you're supposed to teach you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Was there something wrong with that? No, but it was just at that time. It was like, that's how I feel. I think there's so many things like this in life from within and without that are, they're all signals, you know, like that book, yeah. The Gift of Pain by Dr. Paul Brin. It's, uh, he says pain is our greatest gift because it, it tells us exactly where the problem is and exactly how bad it is. Yeah, I like that. So we like know that. the location and we mm. know the, the level of urgency to tend to it. Now we can put it off or whatever, you know, but at a certain point. So what now I look at these signals, if I'm getting signals from other people or if they're coming from me internally, like, okay, why am I all, why do I feel super anxious right now? Yeah. Why do I feel fearful right now? Why do I feel angry right now? Why do I feel like I want to just go investigate the source of the signal? all the time because i know now being much older these are all teachers every single one of them every single signal it's a teacher and boy do we get a lot of them 
from both within and without. <laughs> Holy crap. It's a lot. It's so amazing. It really you is. Even keep uh, track of it all. How do you, how would you live with, I need to journal. I just talked myself into journaling. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where you ooze when you got no one to ooze to is the page. Uh, you know what I mean? The book of ooze. The book of ooze. Dude. <laughs> wow, man. This yeah. is great. Well, it's, it's, it's important. I mean, that's jokes. That's songs. Think about how much ooze yeah. is in songs. How many right? songs are going to be in that book? All of them. All of them. Yeah. All and how many jokes them. come from ooze? Yeah. Yep. I'm glad we got to ooze today. Man, this whole podcast is, comes a time to ooze. <laughs> totally Wizard of ooze. Time, always time to ooze. The ooze zone. <laughs> <laughs> ooze zone dude that's what we should change the patreon to is the ooze zone the ooze zone come come get your ooze face on Boos. <laughs> yeah it's interesting too and i i've thought about that where it's like crying is one of the more like psych, like psychedelic things like when you're like just when you're in that moment oh can we talk about that real quick how you and I, at the end of the second set of oh, the Saturday man. night of Sphere, I texted you and I said, buddy, I've yeah. been, I don't know what it was, okay? But, well, I have an idea. But the minute you guys started Stella Blue till the end of Not Fade Away, I was crying from like a, a place so deep back like it wasn't yeah. like a, it was an <laughs> uncontrollable, like where I was like exhales would be like, <gasps> you know, like one of those <laughs> where it was just like, you know, like, oh, I, I, whether it, it was like combination of like happy tears and just tension yeah. and release a week of shows was over. Like, uh, like was, I had a moment, was out. Ooh, stuff was dude, out, it was man. just, but I was getting like, <laughs> you know like big big like like breaths where i couldn't catch my breath i was crying so much and i texted you right after the show and i said but i was bawling during the whole second set and what'd you say to me i can't even remember cause what did i say there's you said you were crying the whole set you were you there were times oh, throughout there was the show a, that there was you, a song it wasn't stella blue it was a different song it was the second to last song. I think I asked Jay Blakesburg about it the next day. I think it was Broke Down Palace. Did, was I go, that the same night? I go, hey, so I got in during space. Yes, it was. Yeah, hey, so I got in during it. space and cried the whole rest of the show through Not Fade Away, like sobbed. Some weird release of all of it. You go, man, I was crying for two of those songs. The same release was happening to me. Yeah. It's like I'm accepting all the bullshit and the world's bullshit and still be glad to be me and glad to be here. Yeah, it was like some crazy thing was going on where it was just like it was so damn emotional and so like God. But it it's, was just when music is right, if we talked about this uh with Big Steve, <clears throat> partially it's many things, and I don't downgrade any of them, including just the entertainment part. But part of it for me has always, and this is just going to be the way it is forever because it, from Africa, that's the way it is. It's part exorcism. That's what, whether you go into gospel music or the blues in the black community way back in slave times, that emotional exorcism that darkness having to move out of you <laughs> you know that's what the music is for to move it out of you yeah whether the darkness is internal whether it comes from you or whether it comes from without or it has to be both so it you need it needs to be magic to move both of those things you know yeah, yeah. and the music of the grateful dead is that I felt it. I felt it be an earthquake where you're gasping for your breath like that or a tornado or a hurricane, yep. but also 
a balm, a salve on a wound, on an open wound too. Yeah, um, yeah. And that, <clears throat> after you've had that from music, other stuff pales in comparison. <laughs> it just does. And when it comes back <laughs> to you, like it was the type of crying that I did at Fare Thee Well. Yes. Yeah. in soldier field and it was the type of like at fish things where you look around and it's like 60,000 of us are in this field in Maine yeah. and everybody's feeling it and that not fade away was so perfect because it was that you know our love will not fade away and everybody got so emotional and it was this thing of like we're approaching 60 years of Grateful Dead, right? Yeah. And the love has not faded away. And everybody there, old, young, you guys, us, the the, the people working in the in the aisles, yeah. everyone felt it. And it was like a chant and it was like a like a anthem. Like we're all in this together and we're giving it to you and you're giving it to us. And yeah, I've heard that song a million times. But that yeah, but one when, had a little bit of ajou see, on it, and it was, see, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. I I look at um, Bob and Mickey and Bill and Phil and everybody from that time that's still here. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Mountain Girl, Parish, and Babs and Parish and all those guys, you know and it's just like they're mythical to me and as as many of my heroes die you know they are from the age of heroes they really are from the age of heroes yeah i've been here helping keep these things alive you know from colonel bruce to the allman brothers to the dead you know but these guys actually changed the planet. <laughs> you know? It's like, amazing. They were such trailblazers. Yeah. They were such trailblazers. And those people from that time are just mythical. It, for you to even lay eyes on them at all, the fact that you can lay eyes on a Willie Nelson or that you could, you know what I mean? Of course. You could a still Dolly lay Parton. eyes on a, on a Dolly Parton, on a Paul McCartney, on a Mick Jagger and yeah. Keith Richards. You could still lay eyes on a Phil Lesh and a Bill Kreutzmann and a Mickey Hart and a Bob Weir mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a Parrish and a Babs and a Mike. You could still, any, but your elders, man, these people that were And a Stevie them, Wonder and a yeah, Taj man. Mahal. I mean, yeah. Because a lot of them are going. You can still lay eyes on Herbie Hancock. Yep. Way yep. shorter pass, man. My heroes just, they're just going. You can still lay eyes on Ron Carter. Ron Carter like will like the post of mine. And I'll just be, I'll just have to sit. You know, I mean, people yeah. don't even know. I will sit right there and cry. It'll make me cry right now. Yeah. Woo, am I glad I lived long enough to experience that. Yep. Who could have even known what Instagram was? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. or a cell phone. I, I mean, know. we heard about Star Trek communicators. We didn't really think we were going to get to have one. That Ron Carter is going to be like, yo, man, that was cool. Yeah. What? I know. <laughs> you know I know. Like, I know. It's I know. just, uh, it's a beautiful thing. So, <laughs> I, you know, what we're talking about, it's a, it's a conversation I had with my buddy, David Brendel, late night, and it's, he was feeling it too at the sphere and it's a it's a question that anybody can ask themselves that i think is one of the most important questions if if the end was to come right now like say you know it's tomorrow so yeah. here you are at the end was it worth it all oh, all of it all the bad but if you get to put all the good on the other side of that scale yeah, that you've experienced just till now, was it worth it? 
And it was so clear to me that it was. That's what I was crying about mm -hmm. at the sphere. Yeah. And mine was just a trickle. Here was mine. Am I crying or? I wasn't sure. And this little teeny, the tiniest of trickle went down the side. And I was like, I'm crying right now. Yeah. Something was being released very lightly. Yeah. I was letting go of something. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. it was like a radical acceptance. Or maybe I had answered that question. It was all worth it. And that, uh, yeah. And yeah. it was. And yeah. I was looking out into the crowd at the sphere. It was definitely a hell yeah. Yeah, dude. Because I mean, I have so much to put on that other side of the scale. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So much. I've realized what a huge, like when the Grinch steals everybody's presents, you know, they're in one huge bag. Yeah. That's the bag I have sent on. Yeah. The other side of that scale. It's yeah. It's crazy, man. It came it, right out. Broke down pals. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry and Bob. Thank you, Bob Weir and Mickey and Bill and Phil and all those who came through the dead. All of those. Yeah. Yeah. Barlow. Thank Hunter. you. Well, that was my first Bob was yeah, Jerry and Bob, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Jerry and yeah. Bob Hunter. And well, then, but, but Pig yeah, Penn you know, and Keith and everybody. Yeah. Everybody, man. Cause what, a, what a crazy, you know, one thing I can put on that scale, that's crazy. And it's just a sticker that I saw. It's a sticker that starts with Jerry and it goes through all the original members, you know, pig. And it has, a, cause there's one guy I didn't know. I was like, who's the guy with the fez? They were like, it's Tom Constant. Um, yeah who I yeah. ended up playing with in Portland at the emperor of the elf kingdom. Um, but the sticker, there's a per, there's heads that go all the way around and at the end is us. <laughs> and I was you're like, part Oh of that. shit. Yeah, yeah dude. You're part of that. It's like when you watch long strange trip and it ends and then there's you. That dude. was a moment in my life that put that on the scale. We're not even talking about, I mean, I, way before any of that, I could start with Jess, <laughs> Nigel, Kavi, right? Yeah. How we about Kofi, go, you know? My whole I'm, life all with the Kofi. Way back. Yeah. yeah, so much. Exactly. Yeah. Now, oh, now you start thinking about all the good things. Yep, yep. They're almost like if you live this long, they really pile up. So it's a, yeah. it's a good reason to keep living and let more of those pile up. And you get smarter and you dump more of your self pity. You like get to redo yourself. You get to start over every day a little bit again, you know, yeah. and just get better. You know, you know, I completely understand what you're saying. And it's interesting to hear the, 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 the side that you were feeling at that moment, because I'm standing in section one Oh five. I'm on the aisle. I'm kind of like lined up right with you. And I get, I, I just let out like a huge sigh. I had just done 14 or 12 shows at the comedy cellar, a club that I've always wanted to work. And now I'm working it and yeah. it aligns with my favorite band, my favorite <laughs> music in the entire world at the sphere just and I'm running together. and it's like my breath is, is like, I'm out of breath and I get there and I look to my left and it's like, literally one of my best oldest friends that I was able to invite and you know, he's there and I'm watching him have a good time. And I'm looking at you, one of my n newest, my brother, you know, and, and, and you're up there and you're in your zone and I'm looking around at everybody else and everybody's having a good time. And it was just this kind of feeling of like, it was the end of a week. It was the end of a thing. I'm thinking about where I was when I first heard these songs, how I felt when my dog Stella was being put down and yeah. broke down palace came on in the room when she was being like sent away to the next world and at all. But what I had was this moment of just like, I made it all come true. Like it all, yes. my dreams are coming true and I'm living 
one of these yes. I'm getting goosebumps right now where it's like it's all happening and all this hard work and all this goddamn sacrifice and loneliness and questioning and, you know, ketamine therapy and the, the yeah. lows I hit and the other side are these highs and it's all happening right now. The and fight. it just how on earth could my body hold in the ooze at that yeah, point? Dude, and it was no just way. this. And I was just so I, I looked at my my buddy and and he's looking at me and I'm just. I just told him I loved him and I told you <laughs> and I told everybody yeah, in that man. moment. And I, you know, and it was just this thing of like, wow, we did it. I did that's, it. And that's, that is magic. Yeah. It's not just about people go, Oh, it's hard work and blah, blah, blah. Now, I know plenty of people that did hard work and, but they had financial success and blah, blah, and they killed themselves. Yep. You know, what we're talking about here is magic. You're talking about alchemy. You're yeah. talking about transmuting deep pain and deep fear, a lot of which you had no fucking control over. Yep. It was just put on you. Yeah. Yeah. Extremely young. Yeah. And so, like, you know, now you got to deal with it. Here it is. I just have this huge thing to deal with. But your dreams that part is magic your belief that part is magic your endurance to hold on by a fucking thread where no one can even hold you up there yeah like you that's the cave part where you have to go in alone and you got to come and then you're still holding on to that dream that visualization that magic thing and it's manifesting and it's man. Then all of a sudden you're like, oh, now it's my reality. That's called magic. Yeah. That's alchemy. That's transmuting. That's transcending. That's persevering. That's all these things that can't be measured or quantified by science. Yeah. Every one of them. Yeah. Cannot be quantified or measured. Right. They're all in the magic category. Yeah. <laughs> And it makes you the huge, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and I think that was like, you know, and you know how hard I am on myself. It, it was the, one of the first times I think in God, I don't know how long where it, it was undeniable. It was undeniable. It all came together. It all came together at once right in front of me. And like, I'm like looking at gift you. Wrapped yes. Present. <laughs> you know? like, and it was just all of it. And, and I'm like the things that kept me going at the worst times was my friends, my music, comedy, and, and the you, belief that there was the belief yes. that there was still good. You right? had a faith, man. You did have a faith. Yep. And you found it. And the proof is that it's that it's the only thing you had left to depend <laughs> on. You know to, what? I mean, at the end of the day, like if you don't find it, it's like they say with addicts, mm. you know, you can't help them. They have to find that thing, whatever it is themselves. Yep. And then once they find it, you can help the shit out of them. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. like yeah. you can really help a lot. Yeah. You know? yep. Until they find it and cling we got to cling because we can fall off of it too. You know, we get yeah. the fear. It's still there. It's still like on my back clinging to me, yep. but I'm still clinging to this thing, this faith. You know? And that, and that broke and down palace, fruit. Yeah, that broke boy. down palace line where it's, you know, fare thee well, fare thee well. I love you more than words can tell. Of course, yeah. waterworks, but also I thought about, the dog, of course, I thought about. But you know what else I thought about, dude? The pain. The yeah. pain and the fear and the and the literal like petrified feelings I had where it's like fare thee well. Like thank you yeah. for thank you for the fuel that Thanks I needed. For teaching to get. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Fare Thanks thee well. Love you, fear. <laughs> I love you, fear. You know? Yeah. That's what we're exactly. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, who's the preacher? Mike. <laughs> I love See, you, we're buddy. all, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hear Thank you, man. Thank you for preaching that word to me. Uh, 
My love Somebody you, Somebody said, what better revenge <laughs> against <laughs> lies than to tell the truth? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. But we you did know, it. To, yeah. Thank you for it, man. Thank you for it. Because I'm looking at you up there knowing what you're going through and knowing what you're, you know, your family's not there and you're and you're and it's all you're putting it out there for us. So yeah. I couldn't have done it without you and you couldn't have done it without it's all that's the that's amazing the, thing is that's the magic of the whole thing. Fill the balloon really and let go, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anytime that where there's these things where one depends on the other. You know, I know it could be included in this category, but it could be, and it's probably different too, but it seems like golf isn't as much of that way as comedy and music are. Like, you could do it alone. Like, comedy is really the ultimate because you literally cannot do it alone. You can't just stand in a room and do it. Like, I could play music in here by myself. But, so maybe comedy is the truest one. Because I love this thing where you can, where it's just it depends on both sides of it. It just depends. Improvisational music to me is definitely that way. Like, of course, yeah, that's my. I could get on a tear by myself and go, "Oh, I wish people would have heard that," but it is never is going to compare to if you have three or more people together on a tear in that zone, yeah, that group mind thing, like. And it's getting there at the sphere, man. It's oh like, God, yeah, it, yeah, there, it's there. I, we it's need, there. But with you guys, like, and I do feel it. I feel it. I think that's what brings the tear out is yours. And then my scale piles up on the good side. <laughs> you know. And that's what we're jealous of as comics, where it's like. I see. And, and, and me in particular, I can't speak for everybody else, but it's like I live for that improvisational moment that you're talking about, you know, as a as a fan in the audience. That's yeah, what I you choose. Do you do. Oh, I dream this. Wow. I remember now because I was wearing a purple tie dye and you had a purple thing behind you also. Wow. Really? Oh, what did you say right before then? Oh my God! We sorry. dream like this. I, I I don't wait. What? I don't know. Now I got to remember my. This is my biggest fear. Uh, sorry. This is that's what we're really jealous weird. of. Like we 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 chase that moment. I'm chasing that. Like I, I go as a fan to watch you guys. But you did it. You master did it. that thing. You did it. I watched you do it, because even in the reverse, when the audience was crappy. You started this interaction with them that actually flipped it, and now it was good again. You, you did you. alchemy right in front of our faces. Thank you. Because you were like, oh, man, this is fuck. It's like us coming out with a bad crowd. <laughs> you Got know, to we, get the, we know the crowd's like pulling for us the whole time. You know? Yeah, yeah. But you flipped it. That was Now, that's improv right there. Dude. Thank you. That's Thank master you. improv. But I can only give I can only give credit to the greats like Big J and Attell that I've seen do it in a way where people are like he's gonna chew her up. Oh wow, she doesn't know what she's getting into. And Jay will go, it's okay, it's all right. She's not having a good time. What's what's wrong? You know, and Alchemy <laughs> dude spins that to Spin it around. she's literally a lifelong fan and. He somehow made the show better for whoever's coming after him. Uh, That's boot, the thing. To boot. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because yes, now I, they I, don't have the same crappy crowd that he started with. <laughs> he addressed it and he said, listen, I took it. I made it better. Here you go. Now you have fun. You know, but that's what you guys do. And that's what. That's what we do it for each other, man. And that's and, and no one you guys were in the audience. That's all I cared about. I had an oh, audience of three, you know. <laughs> and I did when we played that corporate gig. It was the same way because <laughs> you could tell there was like, I guess Hewlett Packard just like paid for the whole thing, um, but there was probably five hundred deadheads there out of like thirteen thousand. There was thirteen thousand people in there. Amazing. It was 
amazing. It wasn't packed, but it was. It felt full. Yeah. But it didn't feel like our crowd, you know. But when you would open your eyes, <laughs> you would see the deadheads. It looked like Mexican jumping beans <laughs> in the middle of just like, you know, yeah. it was so funny. Yeah. And then th the smiles also, it was like 13,000 watt because they're like, this is kind of like a private show. It's bonus. Yeah. yeah like, you it's, know, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they knew all the words. Aww. And so I know for me, I was playing right to them and they knew it. And yep. which made it even better. They yep. were like, this is insane. Yep. Um, it was so fun, man. So it doesn't matter. All it takes is a few, man. <laughs> and we have the choice to either go, well, I'm going to let you bring me down or I'm going to bring you guys up with up. me. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's... and I'm going to tell you that night for me was as good as any other night that we had yep. on this run. Because yeah. I knew going into it, I w it was going to be. Yeah. I was like, I get to play the sphere again tonight for 13,000 people. Let's see how many new fans we can make. I bet, and I bet you made a ton, dude. I think I we did, man. Yeah. Because they're looking at the ones next to them that are having, like, <laughs> losing their minds, you know? Yeah, yeah. And they're kind of seeing us playing to them. I think we did. I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe well, someone will write in, hey, man, I was there at that corporate show, and now I'm a fan. Yeah, they're, and they're probably, and now you can get a discount on printers. Thank you to Hewlett Packard. So <laughs> <laughs> finally, it gets paid back, O'Teal. <laughs> Hewlett Packard endorsement. <laughs> Use promo code comes a time for 10% off <laughs> cartridges. <laughs> Hey, dude, I could I could use it, man. Cause yeah, a little HP you know, money, man. No. Them, them cartridges, bro, for the printers are not cheap, pricey. Yeah, you know our ink will fade away. Dude. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so come on, bro, can you help a brother? I'll get this ink to NFA over here. <laughs> you know our. We wish our ink would not fade, not fade away. away. I'll do the. I know. I'll write the jingle right now. Just <laughs> I think we advance. just did, dude. I yeah. think we just did. <laughs> we love you guys so so much, and thank you for uh, being here with us on Comes a Time podcast. And uh, well, man, it was so awesome to hang with you, O'Teal, and we got to so do some fun. stuff in person. So and it, fun. A shot in the arm that that so we fun. yeah we got to do it more, and we will be doing it more. So. Subscribe and all that stuff, folks. We love you. Thank you. And uh, be good to each other. Let the ooze out. Yeah, cry. Go ahead and cry, especially you guys. Jeez. Yeah, huh? What's taking so long? <laughs>